Hey family, we have come to a point of some unprecedented times where we are having to do our church online. Thank you all for your help, all your uh, support. I know this is different, but the building is not the church, and we are the church. And wherever we are is where the church is. So in this time, we just have to remind ourselves that ministry doesn't stop just because we're not in a building. And ministry doesn't stop because we don't have access to people. I know we're practicing social distancing, but that's just physical distancing. You can still call somebody. You can still talk to them, video chat. So let's continue to just keep that in mind and keep that as we go. Uh, today's message, we, we've reached the end of our journey. We've been in 1 Peter, and now we're in 1 Peter chapter 5. And let's just a recap. 1 Peter has really been about suffering. And not suffering for a long time, but suffering for a little while. Uh, Peter twice repeats that term. And we'll see that in today's text. But just suffering, and we, we saw how Christians suffer for no other reason than just being a Christian. And so today we're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 2, um, 1 through 12, sorry. Um, but before we begin, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to come and just watch this video and, and, and learn more about you. Lord, we know that the building is not the church. But you have indwelt us with the Holy Spirit, and that is the church. We are the church. And Lord, we pray that you just continue to comfort our hearts, strengthen us as we go through this pandemic, this unprecedented times. But Lord, we know that you're still God of all, and you're still God over everything. And so Lord, we pray that you just be with us. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be holy and acceptable unto you, my rock my strength, and my Redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In 1 Peter chapter 5, starting with verse 1, it says, To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering, who also was shared in the glory to be revealed. Peter starts out identifying a group of people. And it's not just anybody, it's the elders. It is the leadership. And it's not, this, this term elder isn't a old person or some, it is an office of the church. It has the uh, synonyms of being a pastor or a bishop. And, and, and Peter is saying to the elders, to the pastors among you, I appeal to you as also an elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings. He always goes back to Christ's sufferings. We saw that in, last, in chapter 4, that because Christ suffered for us, we can suffer. And it says, who were also sharing the glory to be revealed. Peter says, I saw Christ get crucified. I saw him suffer on the cross for us. And now I will also get a chance to share in his glory to be revealed. Verse 2, it, said, verse two, it says, to be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. Watching over them, not because you must, but because you're willing. As God wants you to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Peter gives a, a construction. It says, not this, but this. And so Peter goes through this, this verse, and he, he shows us in, in verses 2 and 3 that how to be a shepherd. And, and a shepherd, what they did was they tended to their flock. They fed their flock. They guided their flock, and they guarded their flock. And so when Peter is doing that, that idea of being a shepherd was well known to the people that was there. And so what we see here is that he wants us to be shepherds to God's flock, to all the pastors that are out there, to all the elders of this church. We have to lead and guide our flock. It says not because you must, not because somebody is pressuring you to do it, but because you are willing, not because you are being pressured because your granddaddy was a pastor, or because your, your daddy was a pastor, not because somebody else that you looked up to was a pastor, but because you are willing. He wants us to be willing, and not just willing, it says, as God wants you to be. God wants us to be willing participants in leading and guiding our flocks. And it says, not pursuing dishonest game. This ain't all about the money. 
And, and truth be told, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of people that put a bad name on being a pastor and a bad name on being a servant leader and a bad name because all they, it looks like they're doing is doing it for the money. But Peter says, don't do it for dishonest gain, but eager to serve. It, 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 it's one thing to be a pastor, you, but the next thing is to be eager to serve. You can't just sit up here and just think, oh, everybody's going to worship me and serve me. As elders, we have to be eager to serve. Now, I know I, I'm preaching this to my congregation, so y'all can hold me accountable to this. I need to be eager to serve you. And then it says in verse 3, not loitering over those entrusted to you. It, what that means is that it, people shouldn't want to, shouldn't have to worship us. You, you shouldn't have a seat high on the throne and everybody's doing everything for you. It, it says we should be eager to serve and we shouldn't lord it over those entrusted us, but being what? Examples to the flock. We got to set the example. If we want our people to be witnesses, we got to be witnesses. If we want our people to, to live by the Bible, we got to live by the Bible. If we want our people to share their faith, we got to share our faith. If we want our people to have faith and trust in him, we got to have faith and trust in him. We got to be examples to the flock. And in verse 4, he brings it all back and all together. It says, and when the chief shepherd... Who is the chief shepherd? Jesus Christ is the chief shepherd. Appears, you will receive a crown of glory that will never fade away. Back in those days, they had a athletic events and they would receive crowns of, of a wreath. And, and they would they would wine and they would have ivy leaves and, and flowers. And then the thing about those is they faded away. But but Peter is saying here, you are gonna receive a crown that will never fade away if we are faithful to those flocks. We set the example. We not lord it over them, but we are chief servants to those people. We're going to receive a crown for what we did as elders to our congregations. But he goes on. He says, in the same way, you who are younger submit yourselves to your elders. All of you. Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Peter says, now, now listen to the younger people. And, and then this idea of younger and elder, it still was talking about offices. It was talking about the, the younger Christians or the younger offices or officers in that church. It says, you in the same way submit to your elders. Submit to those people who are in power and position above you. And then he goes on, he says, all of you, everybody in the church, clothe yourselves with humility. Humility toward one another. That means I don't look at myself better than you. This applies to everybody, not just the elders, but everybody. We should look at other people as being better than we are. We should look towards other people to, to be uh, humble towards them. Because why? God opposes the pride. If you got your nose stuck up and you can't nobody help you and can't nobody do nothing, then, then you're not humble. If you look to other people to help them and do what you can, that's what humility is. But he goes on to kind of help us understand it and help us define it. He says, verse 6, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he might lift you up in due time. He wants us to humble ourselves under God's mighty hand. Meaning, God, we have to have the correct view of God. And when it says God's mighty hand, God is all-powerful. It, it represents who he is and his, his work and his power. And it says we need to humble ourselves. We need to have the correct view of God and the correct view of us. If we think of ourselves more important than and that the, the world revolves around us, then that's not humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God. It says that we have to have the correct view of God and the correct view of our relationship to God. So what does that mean? New creation, that means that we just have to walk in humility, meaning we got to trust God and let God be at the forefront of our lives. It says, now let's keep this in context because we've reached the end, and, and, and all of 1 Peter was talking about suffering. And this church was suffering. They were, they were going through a lot. And, and Peter kept reminding them, it's only for a little while. And we talked about that a little bit. A little while could be a long while. But, but in, in relationship to eternity, it's, it's just a little while. And he says right here, 
in order to, to keep your, the correct perspective, he wants us to do something. And he wants us to cast all our anxiety on him because he cares for us. Peter drops this nugget in here. And, and, and I think this is so appropriate for today. That we have to look at God as the one who's going to provide for us. We got to look at God as the one that's going to be there for us. And we need to cast all our anxiety on him. There's a lot we can worry about. And that church was suffering a lot. And so there was a lot that they were worried about. They were worried about leaving and being punished just for being a Christian. We don't have those kind of worries today. But, but we have worries today. And, and, and our worries, if we idolize them and we just worry about those things and we just focus on the things that we're concerned about, we'll idolize them. We'll make those more important than what they should be. And when we do that, it causes us to worry, how am I going to take care of this? Listen, when we, when we have anxiety and we worry, we're not humbling ourselves because our view of ourselves is wrong. Because when we see these problems, we think, oh, i got to fix it. I know, I know we got a lot of A personality people in our church, and we got a lot of, lot of, lot of strong black women. And, and when they get some problems, they gotta, they got to fix them. we got to fix them. I, gotta, I got this issue. i got to take care of it. I got this problem. i got to take care of it. And, and when we do that, we forget, and we forget the, the relationship of us to God. God has to be at the high, and he has to have the mighty hand, and we got to humble ourselves to him. And so when we do that, we're looking to ourselves to solve the problem and not looking to God. And God is saying here, Peter reminds us, it says to cast all your anxiety, not just some, not just your money problems, but all your anxiety, all your issues, all on him. Why? Because he cares for us. It's like this. It's like this. Here's some worries that we have. Some of us worry about our family. We worry about our family. And, and we worry if we can take care of our family. And we worry about uh, uh, all the things that we have. And so with our family, let's imagine this is a 100-pound weight. And, and this rep here represents our own personal yoke that we have to carry. And we, we take this and we, we worry about it. So we put it in the basket. And we worry about our bills. How are we going to pay our bills? And we, we worry about if I'm going to make enough money. And, and with all this stuff going on, we, we worry if we're going to make enough money. And if that Trump check is going to come in cash and we can, we can pay these bills off. And then we worry about money and our job. With, 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 with everything that's going on right now, some of us are so concerned that we might just lose our job. Some of us may have had to get laid off because of this COVID-19. And we, we're worried that we might not have enough money to be able to take care of our bills or our job might go away. And, and we, we're carrying these burdens. We we'll continue to carry these burdens. But some of us, this COVID-19 has got us shook. And we think that we're going to lose our lives. We, we don't want to touch nobody, get close to nobody. We don't even really want to talk to nobody. And for some of us, it's okay. We, we, we've been living like this for a long time, but COVID-19 has shook us to the core and shook our society. Now, now that we're so concerned about this and, 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 and we, we're carrying this weight and, and, and it doesn't go there. We, some of us are thinking about others and, and, and what others think about us. And we, we're thinking about what others' perceptions of us. And, and we think about others' view of how we live our lives and what kind of person we are, what kind of dad we are, what kind of mother we are. And we carry this burden to try to be the perfect person, to try to be the perfect um, mother or father, perfect husband, her perfect wife. And we carry this burden around and we, we continue to carry it around. Some of us, our health, we've been, we've been given diagnoses that have been unfavorable to us and we're worried. We're worried that our health is going to continue to deteriorate. And it may not be our health. It may be a health of a loved one. They may be diagnosed with cancer, may have had a heart attack. Whatever it is, we will carry around this burden. And then, and then, for some of us, it's social media. And we care so much about getting likes. 
we, we post something and we, we check it every 10 minutes just to see how many likes we got or, or how many views we got on our Instagram post or whatever it is and, and likes have, have consumed ourselves and we worry so much about this. And this really bothers me because our youth have really bought into their validation of who they are is in these likes. And, and, and we carry this around and this, this worry. But, but the Bible says that we need to cast our cares. So what does that look like? Casting your cares looks like this. It looks like this. Taking your cares over to God. So this yoke over here is a little bit different. This yoke is a two-person yoke or a two-ox yoke. And so you got an ox on this side and an ox on this side. And, 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 and the Bible says we need to cast our cares. It means we need to turn it over to God. But see, in, in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, it says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened. It says, come to me, all who are tired of carrying around this load, these, carry, these worries, and I will give you what? Rest. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle, and here it is again, and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. In Matthew, Matthew, Jesus is talking here. And Jesus says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What that represents, see, we think that when we cast it to Jesus, we don't have it anymore. But Jesus is telling us that we need to cast our cares and put our burdens on him and take up his yoke. Now, his yoke is two people. And his yoke, we got to cast it to him. And see, if we had two people up here, it, uh, when, when they would try to pick the ox for these kind of yokes, they would get the same size ox, right? They, they would want an ox that was the same size as this one and this one. Because what would happen if you had two different sizes? One side, one person would be bearing more of the burden than the other. And, and, and that's a picture and that's a reminder for us that Jesus is saying, take my yoke. See, we don't lose the issues. I want you to see that. He said, take my yoke. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Why is it easy and why is it light? Because God of this universe is so much bigger than us. The God of this universe is so much greater than us. So even if we stand up here trying to bear this burden, we got the God of the universe on this other side. And the God of this universe is so much bigger than us that it doesn't even feel like we're carrying any weight. We don't, it doesn't even feel like we're carrying any burden because he is carrying it and bearing it for us. That's what God wants us to do. He says, come to me, all who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you Rest. Some of us have not rested since they put in this self-quarantine, this, this uh, self, uh, social distancing. Some of us have been worrying day and night about what, what's my job going to do. And Jesus is saying and telling us, take my burden upon you. Cast your cares on him because he cares for us. But Peter doesn't stop there. He said, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. He said, when you cast it on him, be careful. Keep your eyes and keep on the watch. And keep looking because the devil is looking for you. It says, he, look, he is prowling around like a roaring lion. That, that, that the word roaring just will give the idea of hungry. This lion is hungry. And when, when a lion is hungry, he goes on the hunt and he, he stalks his prey. And he's looking for us. He's looking for someone to devour. Now, now the lion, when they hunt, they always look for the weak link. They always look for the weak prey. And see, Peter intentionally puts this after casting your cares on him. See, because if we carry these birds around, it makes us tired and weak and heavy laden. And, and that's who the line, that's who the devil is looking at us for. He's looking for that weak Giselle, or he's looking for that weak gazelle, sorry, and he's looking for that weak ox, and he's looking for that weak uh, antelope, and, and he's looking for the one that's separated from his flock, 
And, and that's the one he prays on, and he goes out there. He's looking because he's hungry to devour someone. But Peter says this. He says, resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Peter reminds the church here that they are not alone. They're not alone in their sufferings. They're not alone in what they're going through. And new creation, we're not alone. We're not the only church closed. We're not the only church doing church by video. We're not the only church that's doing all of this stuff by ourselves. We are a part of a greater system. We're a part of a greater body. And everybody is going through the same kind of issues. But he says, resist him, standing firm in the faith. He said, don't fight the devil. We, we couldn't fight him no way. We, we don't have the power to fight the devil. Or, or, or you, you might have heard people say, just bind the devil. Well, as the Pastor Bell used to always say, if, if you bind the devil, it's not working because why you got to keep binding them? Why keep getting out if you got to keep binding them? Listen, Peter tells us the, the formula. He says, resist him. And, and it's the idea of standing on a rock, standing on a firm foundation. Standing firm, not just on anything, but on Jesus Christ. In the faith, stand on him. After we cast it, our cares on him, we stand firm and we just resist the, 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 the attack that the devil's going to bring. Because we're not in this alone. We, we're, we're part of a bigger body. In verse 10 it says, And the God of all grace, who called you to this eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered, what? A little while. He will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Peter wraps it all up and says, And the God of all grace. Grace is getting something that we don't deserve. The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory, who, who brought you into his family. He is the one that after you have suffered for a little while, he knows what we're going through. He knows the problem and the issues that we have. He knows all about what we are doing and what we are going through. He, he's no, COVID-19 didn't sneak up on God. It didn't sneak up on him. He already knew about it. And because of that, he says, after you suffer a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Oh, new creation. If we can just trust in God and trust in him enough that, that, and not focus on our problems, not focus on our issues, but just have our faith in him and stand strong and resist the devil, then Peter says he will restore us. For some of us, that res restoration may not come on this side of the earth, on this side of heaven. We, that restoration will fully be realized for all in eternity. But he says he will make you strong, firm, and steadfast. And then he wraps it up. He says, to him be the power forever and ever. Amen. He, he, he goes back to who Jesus is, who God is, and he says, to him be the power forever and ever. There is no power outside of the power that God has. And we sometimes got to remind ourselves that we can't do this ourselves. We can't do this alone. we got to have the power of God. And he has the power forever and ever. In Matthew, Matthew puts it, all, Jesus said, I have all authority in heaven and in earth. All authority, all power in heaven and in earth. We just need to remind ourselves that God through the Holy Spirit has given us the Holy Spirit to give us the power we need to live this life. He has all the power forever and ever. Amen. And then he wraps it up with verses 12 through 14. He says, With the help of Silas, whom I regard as a faithful brother, I have written to you briefly, encouraging you and testifying that this is true grace of God. This is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. She who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends her, you her greetings, and so does my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to you all of you who are in Christ. Peter says, this is true. 
this is faithful. We need to stand fast and be stand firm in it. And then he says, greet one another with a kiss of love. Now today, we might not want to greet each other with a kiss of love. We might want to do an elbow bump in love. But, but, but what he's saying is, is love each other and the peace to all who are in Christ. New creation of whoever's watching. Listen, we need to understand and remember, we got to cast our cares on him because he cares for us. Cast our cares. Stop worrying about all this COVID-19 stuff. God was the same guy yesterday. He'll be the same guy today. And he'll be the same guy tomorrow. It doesn't matter to him what's going on in this world. We just have to be faithful to him and give him our issue because he cares for us. But if you're here, you're watching this, and, and you still don't feel comfortable, it, it may be because you don't know him as your Savior. It may be that you don't know who this Jesus is. Well, this Jesus that we're talking about, he died on the cross for our sins. He died because he loved us. And, and he shows his love for us because while we were yet sinners, he died on the cross. But he also shows love for the Christians because he tells us to give us, give him your worries, give him your cares, cast them on him, and he cares for us. But you can't cast it on him unless you believe in him. And the way to believe, you've got to believe the five things we teach here in New Creation, that Jesus is God. A lot of people believe that he was just a good prophet, but no, 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 Jesus was God. He was the Son of God. He died on the cross for our sins. He was buried, and he rose again. Why is being buried important? You only bury dead people. He had to die. He had to die to take the sacrifice for our sins. And because of that, because of that, he rose in all power and all glory. And because we, if you believe in that, then you are saved. So what we'd like you to do, drop a comment. Drop a comment in YouTube. Drop a comment in Facebook. Let us know with an email address of, that you have been saved. And we'll reach out to you. And we'll reach out and, 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 and have more conversations with you and welcome you to the family of God. If you would like, you can, you can call the church. The information will be provided in the Facebook page or on YouTube. So all I'm saying is just let someone know. And the peace of God. Philippians says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. New creation, let's just remember to cast all our cares on him, and he cares for us. God bless you.